Hey watercolor wizards, Hajra here. So today we're making Valentine's decorations using Beatrix Potter's lovely characters. So it's a combination master study holiday project video. And these lovely bunny painting ornaments will also be great for springtime, nursery, Easter, or Mother's Day. And stay tuned till the end of this video as I'll be doing a Valentine's Day watercolor brush and metallic paint giveaway. As usual, art blogs, video notes, sketches, Q and A's, deconstructed painting posts, and art gift rewards are available for my patrons on Patreon. So I took a few hours to sketch up my four bunny drawings and I I covered my freehand drawing process and five total methods of drawing anything in another video, so be sure to check that out too. I had the idea to do Beatrix Potter studies because I saw that a new Peter Rabbit movie is coming out, which looks just horribly unfaithful to Beatrix Potter's characters and world and stories. And if a movie studio wanted to make a funny slapstick rabbit movie, they should have just made up their own bunny characters instead of trying to cash in on her famous characters in a totally mismatched movie. So I did four Beatrix Potter bunny studies total, two with Mother Rabbit, one with Peter Rabbit and one with Benjamin Bunny. I modify them so the scenes are Valentine's Day appropriate, but if you don't care for Valentine's Day, you can make these into springtime or Easter themed pieces or just studies of Beatrix Potter's characters, and the Mother Rabbit pieces would be lovely for Mother's Day as well. I've drawn the illustrations small and within particular shapes because I plan to glue them to wood blanks that I bought for 50 cents a piece at Joann's. Because I'm going to glue and sand the paper edges for a perfect fit, I'm also using the thinnest, softest paintable paper I have have, and that's 90 pound BFK Reeves, which is a soft sized 100% cotton printmaking paper. It's also made by Arches, and it's got an almost thin fabric feel to it. And it's lovely for dry media, or just ink, or ink and wash, or loose watercolor work in a sort of one stroke Asian style. Because it's only internally sized, not externally sized, you can't really lift paint much, and it's not really for tighter, many layered, complicated work. So I've been inking the lines of my sketches with my waterproof Sig Writer marker in the sepia dark brown color. Because the line sinks in and saturates so much on this paper, it still reads almost as black. If you have no wood blanks or any other support, you can use whatever shape paper works and whatever paper type you want. I'm just using my 90 pound BFK Reeves because I bought a few big sheets some years ago and it works really well for ornament paintings. I used the fine point side of the Zig Writer marker for most of the illustrations and I used a teeny 20 over zero spotter brush in areas where I needed an even finer line. Just scribble a marker on your palette and dip the spotter brush in that scribbled ink and paint with it. If you use a lot of water, it'll get noticeably lighter in colors, so only use a teeny dab of water. Once I was done inking, it was really exciting to get to the coloring part. Painting an inked piece is always a special, unique sort of fun. It's basically coloring in homemade coloring pages. I used the teeniest porcelain palette I have. It turned out to be perfect for miniature painting, as the color swatches and puddles are not that big for miniature paintings, and since I hadn't figured out how to use this teeny palette yet, it was a satisfying bonus to break it in on these bunny ornaments. I used Inktense blocks, just shaved four of the colors right off the blocks into the mini palette wells, and I used a mid-primary red, yellow, and blue, along with some red-violet for vibrant Valentine's hearts. I like circular palettes because they allow for lucid color wheel placement and color mixing, and this palette has plenty of wells to mix secondary colors and various neutrals like browns and tans. I used Inktense because it's an excellent choice for ornaments since Inktense is decently light fast and waterproof, so when I use a gloss varnish or glossy faux resin over the colors, they won't bleed. In the past, I've used Dr. Phil Martin's Bombay inks for this type of ornament painting, as they are waterproof and light fast inks, but I like the handling of ink tents much better. The Bombay inks tend to bleed a lot more and be less amenable to subtle blends. Washy, loose watercolor painting over ink lines is perfect for this paper. If I had done my own style of original bunny ornaments, it would have involved a lot more detail and layering, and then I probably wouldn't have wanted to use this BFK Reeves paper. Arch's watercolor paper would have been the better choice, but these Beatrix Potter bunny studies are just right for this paper. The ink work has some fine lines, but the color painting is far looser than my own style, so I don't have any battles with the paper trying to layer on more details. Anytime I wanted a color line to hold a sharp edge, like a stripe or heart or solid fill shape area, I worked wet on dry. But if I wanted a soft fuzzy edge, I applied water to that section of the illustration first, and then put in the paint wet into wet to get that soft edge. Soft edges won't happen naturally with water media, but on watercolor paper you can come back with a damp brush to soften an edge or create a gradient, like I do often with arches or Fabriano or other watercolor paper. BFK Reeves is also 100% cotton, but like I said, it has no external sizing, so the paint sinks in right away. So the only way to get a soft edge is to put water there first and then apply the paint for a bleed. This is why I keep emphasizing that this paper is awesome for dry media, ink, or ink and wash, but not for more complicated watercolor painting that will require later lifting or later blending. Looking at the Mother Rabbit pieces, I don't see anything wrong with presenting a lo 
loved parent with a Valentine's Day gift. The bedside scene with Mother Rabbit is really personally touching to me because I was a sickly child and my mom bending over my bed and giving me super tea was an oft occurring scene for my first 10 years of life. For the Mother Rabbit and the rocking chair, I added a hanging bunch of hearts to make it sort of more Valentine'sy. For the bedside scene, I added hearts to the bed covers and headboard and later coordinating dots and stripes to the pillowcase, bed skirt, and wallpaper. For the Peter Rabbit piece, I handed him a Valentine's heart and for Benjamin Bunny, I handed him a bouquet of heart-shaped blossoms. Many of the artists I love, like Dulac, Leindecker, Muha, and several others, I was really only exposed to after college when I got back into art and researched illustrators, but Beatrix Potter was one of those illustrators I actually grew up seeing and have loved almost my whole life, so doing studies of her enchanting and delicately drawn characters was a real lovely thing for me. It was nostalgic and bittersweet. It brings back so many childhood memories of reading in bed or reading her stories out loud to my younger brother. So I'll take a break from painting here. We'll return to painting the two handsome bunny bucks in a bit, but I want to show how to turn these paintings into lovely glossy ornaments. And I did the painting at a predetermined size and shape to fit on the wood blank. And the painting is already cut out, and once it's done being painted, I can glue it onto the wood blank using PVA glue or matte medium from Ranger or Liquitex. Any strong pH neutral acid-free glue will work. The painting rarely fits perfectly on the wood blank, so the edges have to be sanded off for a more professional look. Only sand your piece once the glue from gluing the painting onto the wood blank is totally dry. It did take forever to sand the paper on the little scalloped wood heart, so I'm never doing that again. In fact, I'm looking into trying a new product, a watercolor ground by Schminka, for difficult shaped ornaments and jewelry in the future. I also glued and sanded a decorative thin latke paper to the back side of the wood blank, so you can do another painting to glue on the back if you want, and then you can flip to new ornaments on different days. But I went with just a decorative hand block printed paper on the back. Once I was done gluing and sanding both sides, I thoroughly brushed off any paper dust. You don't want that left there, otherwise it'll be sealed in for posterity and annoy the heck out of anybody. Then I just brushed on a Liquitex gloss varnish on the back side of it with a decorative paper to seal that, and then I let that dry. For the front side, I covered it with Ranger's Glossy Accents, which is an acid-free dimensional clear glue finish that will seal the painting under a faux resin finish. I do the outline first for a piece that is not sitting in a recessed bezel, and then I fill in the center with glue. Since I have painful hands from JHS hypermobility injuries, I asked Elijah to help squeeze the glossy accents out. In the past, I've also cut the tip wider or pulled the tip out so it pours easy without squeezing. I popped any bubbles I saw with a pin. I'm okay if a few bubbles show up later as long as focal areas like faces and hands and such are bubble free. The glue goes down cloudy, but it will dry clear and glossy like resin. Unlike resin, glossy accents is water resistant, not waterproof, but it's also non-toxic and non-fumey and much more eco-friendly than conventional resin. I put my jewelry and ornament parts with glossy accents on them in a tin with a lid ajar to dry. This lets them get some airflow, but the mostly closed lid keeps lint and dust or hair from flying about and settling in the wet glue. These wood blanks have no drilled holes, so I'm just going to be gluing ribbon hanging loops to them later and also painting the profiles with an acrylic paint, which you'll see in the final pieces. So while those first two pieces have the glossy accents drying in them overnight, I can get back to painting. So here's Peter Rabbit, and I really like how it looks like he's sort of really shyly holding this Valentine's heart even though the original picture was that he was nervous about being in Mr. McGregor's garden. It really works as a shy Valentine's piece. I've left the palette on screen this time since it was teeny enough to fit so nicely. I started out with wet into wet fur and then I did portions of his face wet on dry. I did the heart wet on dry as well and then I did the jacket wet into wet again. I forgot to paint the top part of his chest brown and then I had the ill-conceived idea that it would look cute as a green shirt front but even after I added buttons to it, it didn't get any better and it just looked ludicrously short, so so I scrubbed out as much of that silly green shirt front as I could, and luckily it was only in a small area and still damp. When I went over it with brown to imply fur, as I should have from the very start, it retained a greenish hue that didn't match with the remainder of Peter's fur. So for a moment I felt as nervous as Peter looks here, but then I recovered and just added a bit of green to his fur everywhere else, and that solved the color mismatching problem. And it looks fine with a little bit of a greenish shadow cast to it, because it's mixed from the same three colors. I did the background with a bit of two metallic greens, the brighter green on the top half and the duller olive metallic one on the bottom. I stopped at just a sheer glaze because I'm only swatch demoing this metallic set, but you can layer and deepen the metallic colors for your own pieces if you want. And moving on to Handsome Benjamin Bunny, and he's much the same process and colors except he has a smart green waistcoat to Peter's cornflower blue one, and I gave him a bouquet of heart-shaped blossoms instead of a heart-shaped valentine in his hands. And Peter's clogs were green, whereas 
whereas Benjamin's little clogs are burgundy shoes. And for this ornament background, I swatched using the other metallic set. I used a tealish color for the sky, and for the little bit of ground that Benjamin is sitting on, I used the same teal, and then I covered it with an earthy peach color. But then it looked just really too muddy, which I learned happens with metallics if you mix a few colors. Luckily, the metallic mica sits on the surface much more than other paint which sinks in, so I was able to lift most of the mica metallic paint off, even on this non-externally sized paper with a damp q-tip. Then I just poked in the earthy peachy color on its own and then it looked fine as the ground. The quality of both metallic sets from the few colors I swatched from each of them seemed pretty much the same. And these sets are unused except for the small mount I tested them for this video, and they're available as giveaway presents. The larger black set of metallic watercolor pans is from Yasumoto, and the smaller white set of pearlescent watercolor pans is from Zig. They can go down in a glaze, or they can be used thicker for a more dense application. I'm also including six new watercolor brushes in this current giveaway. One silver brush black velvet number four liner brush, one silver brush synthetic number 10 round, one Princeton synthetic number four pointed filbert, one Princeton synthetic 20 over zero spotter, and two mini sable round travel watercolor brushes. To enter this giveaway, just comment and describe below or share with me via email, Patreon, or Instagram your Valentine's Day or anti-Valentine's Day art that you've created or would like to create. I'm going to pick eight winners and email or private message them to ask for their mailing addresses. Patrons get first priority, but this giveaway is also open to all my YouTube subscribers. Even if you've participated in my past giveaways, feel free to participate again. I'm paying for the giveaway gifts and shipping, so if the gift is lost in the mail, then I'm sorry, but it's not going to be replaced. But all my past giveaways have reached their destination safely, so I think it should work out okay. Well, wizards, my Potter Bunny ornaments turned out really delicate and glossy, and the glued on pink ribbon loops and acrylic painted profiles and coordinating colors really added some nice final polishing touches. I hope you enjoyed this holiday project and that you participate in the giveaway while it's still open. Thanks for parking your brushes here. Please like, subscribe, and check out my website links and Patreon page to support my art and art channel below. As always, wishing you fantastical art adventures.